Um, so now I'm going to show you a live demo of how to get started. First step is we need to install Appium Server. Now there's two versions, there's two ways to do that. Um, is this is this? Can you see my um, terminal clearly or not really? Tell me when. Is that cool? All right. So um, either you can use Net, uh, Node Package Manager to install it like this. Um, having been, I've already got it installed and having a problem with the internet here, so that's that's one example. But if you really don't want to get into command line, there's also um, a GUI version called Appium Server GUI. So that's there. The next thing we need is the client. So depending on your language of choice, could be Python, um, Java, Ruby. In our case, we, we want to use Python, so we just do pip3 install the Python client. Let's start that. Just to, to prove a point. So that's, that's already installed, I'll show you there. Um, and then lastly, um, we need to link up a device in the test. So you can use simulators, but if you have a look here, I've got a real device connected. Um, so we're just going to make sure that device is connected by using um, doing ADB devices. And you'll see that it shows up there. Um, just to make the presentation easier, I'm also going to boot up a, a copy of this device on the screen with this screen copy tool. So if you see here, this is um, just a screen representation of the device I have in my hand. So uh, next steps, let's start automating. So at a high level, what we're going to do is we have to load up the Appium server on this machine, uh, load up the inspector, then we're going to populate the capabilities of what we want to test, start the session with the desired application. In this case, we'll use the eBay app. Um, we're going to run through that flow, and we have actually the Appium team has built a recorder, so you can do all this through a graphical interface. And then with that, it will spit out a script which we can run and fine tune. And with that, even a beginner can start running their tests on Appium. So the first step is we'll get the Appium server running. Um, one option is through the command line. Um, so like I showed you here, you can say Appium. And there the server started. But just to make it a bit easier, I'll show you how to do it with the GUI. So you just have to click Start Server here. And once you see that pop up here, you can, it means that it started. The next step is we want to use the inspector, which will help us write these scripts in a graphical manner. So there's two options. There's actually a web, a web version where you don't have to install anything. Um, because of the internet, I'll use the, the desktop version. So this is called Appium Inspector. Then um, let's, let's, to make sure that the Appium connect connectivity is working properly, we're going to load the settings app. Now to do that, I've already actually saved some capabilities for that. But what you can see here is really you don't need to know much to, to get started. You have to list the platform name, the device under test, um, the automation name, which is quite uh, simple depending on what tool you're using and what, platform, uh, what OS you're using, and then just the, the name of the app package and the app activity. So in this case, it's the settings app. So if I click start now, oh, and I also have to, because we're using Appium 1, um, we just have to put a remote path here, wd.hub. Don't ask me why they did that, but in Appium 2, you don't have to do that anymore. So let's just take a look here. So as you see, this is the Appium inspector, which lets you do things graphically. And just to, show, to prove the point, on my phone here, it's got the same screen. So that, that's good. That means that the test is working um, for the settings app. Now, the test under the one we want to actually want to test is this eBay app, which I downloaded from the, the Play Store. So the hard part here is finding out what is the app package and app activity called. Now, the best way to do this is to use uh, ADB to get into a shell. And there we're in the shell. And then there's a command called dumpsys windows windows, window windows. And there you can, if you have to do a bit of needle in the haystack here, but it's quite easy to find um, with a bit of logic that this is the app under test. So you can see it starts with the app package and then the app activity is next. So all we have to do now is copy these into the inspector. So you've got uh, app package here. And then for the act activity, um, you actually, because this part is redundant, you can just take the last bit after the dot. So to copy that in. Um, and just one last thing is because um, when, app, when Appium is running, it actually resets the app and gets rid of any logins you've done. Um, we also like to add another capability called no reset. 
So I'll just add that here. No reset. And we make that Boolean to true. So that means that we'll, whatever login I've already got on the app in here, it, uh, on the eBay app, it's, it's going to stay. So now we just have to click start, and we can start the session. And you can see on the right my real device, what it's, what it's doing at the same time. Oh, there we go. Now what happens is sometimes it's too quick, so you just have to refresh the, the screenshot. The way Appium works is it takes a screenshot and then converts that into an XML, um, which, which is where all the elements are, are created. So what we want, let's say, um, so you can see here an XML of all the, the different elements that has been identified. And if, if the app has accessibility IDs, it makes automation a lot easier. So now let's start doing the user flow we want to test. So first thing is we have to record the session. And then we can click on the individual elements. And you can see exactly what the element is called. And we can just send uh, tap on that. And then we can send some, send some keys here. Um, let's say headphones. Headphones. And you put a new line to simulate enter. So you send that through, and then that will come up. So that, that's basically very, just for this presentation, that's two steps we can do. You can do a lot more, of course. But I think that's enough to, to show um, how exactly Appium works. So now that we've got the recording, um, the next step is we perform the user flow. We need to convert that to code. So Appium Inspector makes this really easy. There's a button here called Copy Code to Clipboard. Oh, sorry. There's a one called um, Show Hide Boilerplate Code. And that means that you can copy this directly, and it will run out of the box. It will do all the imports for you. So we can just copy that, and we can paste that into our favorite editor. So I'll just make a new one, eBay uh, Testing Talks. Oh, sorry. Let's rename that. .py. Um, and we can paste that in. So that has all the steps there. So now that we've um, got that ready, we can run it. But just to make sure the Appium server is disengaged, we just close this inspector session. So I'll just click play on that. And we open up our device. So it started eBay, um, clicked on there. But as you see, there's an error here. So this is where the fine tuning comes in. So um, just back to my presentation. What's happened is this no such element exception has come up, which basically means that uh, it couldn't find the element, the search bar that we were after. And the reason for that is because this is all locally connected, it's, Appium is actually too fast. Um, there's a really easy way around this, though. So, and this is a highly recommended practice in testing. What you can do is um, set an implicit weight. And what that means is that Appium will keep polling the device to look for the element um, for at least uh, as much time as you specify. And as soon as it finds the element, it will move on. If it doesn't find the element after the specified time, it will fail. So I'll just add that in now. Um, it's really simple. You just have to go uh, from here. Driver.implicitly wait. And in this case, we'll use, let's say, five seconds to give it enough time to find that element. So you're just adding a, a characteristic to the web driver. So if we run that again, I'll get the screen copy up. So it clicks on the search bar, sends in the keys, and enter. And that's the test done. So that's your first test written in about 10 minutes. Um, really good flow exploratory testing, learning how to build app automation, which is generally quite an esoteric subject. Um, in terms of next steps, um, there's things you can make. So if you want to solidify this, you definitely set it up in some sort of page object model. Um, you'd pick more predictable element descriptors. So a lot of apps, they might have X parts. Um, which is generally a bit flaky. So with more experience, you'll figure out what's a good way to pick each element and run it. Um, now, just to, uh, what we've, the reason that we're up here head spin is because what we found was as people were running um, tests on Appium, they're really struggling to, to do that setup I just showed you in terms of having devices locally, hosting them, managing them. So what Headspin offers, it's essentially a way to run Appium tests and Selenium tests uh, on real devices around the world. Um, with one line code change, you can actually run all these on, um, on real devices. So, and the, the best thing is that we actually capture all the video network data 
um, run it through our AI engine and tell you how your app performed and how to make it better. So uh, with that, essentially, uh, we're not only letting you run your tests without much headache, we're actually making it a lot more uh, easier and, and straddling the line between developer and tester because performance insights are automatically generated. So if you'd love to, um, if, you, if you thought this was interesting, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I'd love to talk to anyone who's interested and passionate about app testing or mobile testing. And um, a question for the, the prize? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Go. Middle, cut out the middle. Good one. Congratulations. Thank you. Cool. So, yeah. Bit of time? Yeah. Um, can I ask, for, should I ask for questions? Yeah, so that's thank you from me. Any questions about this? The too technical? <laughs> Yeah, hi. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. So, so there's two options. Yeah, you can do an explicit way. You can put a sleeper in. Um, the reason why implicit is, is better because uh, you set it globally and say for example an element loads in half a second, then it will, it will find that and it will go straight away. If you put an explicit wait, you have to wait for the whole time before the element is found. So generally, I mean before I found out about implicit waits, I used to do a lot of sleep and a lot of explicit waits, but now um, it basically means it's, it's just a way that the test will go as fast as possible, but it won't, if it's slow, it won't fail the test. So it's generally, I think it's very good to put that globally at the start, and then you can obviously massage that based on what you want to do. Yeah. Hey. Uh, does this uh, suspect uh, data to the varying network speeds that you're testing an app? So yeah. There's, there's an Appium capability you can do to, to set up a slower network as well. So it's, it's, uh, Appium's really flexible. They've picked up all the best features and put it open source. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 How do we know that whether the past, how we're resolving is the defect or is it the expected functionality? Oh, right, right. Is it, okay, so in that case, that's probably where you go with the uh, test management tool. Um, so there's either open source ones or Headspin or another device farm. Um, so th in terms of the whole management, that's like another level. Uh, yeah, that's what you would have, yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh. Uh, elements, let's say, aren't for example, yeah, yeah. Do that. Yeah, definitely. So, like I showed you with eBay, this is straight from the Play Store. Um, is it time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll just I'll just load that up again, um, and I'll show you what I mean. So actually, that's the beauty of it is with a lot of native apps now, because of accessibility, there's actually an ID for each accessibility word, and that's what you can you you can latch onto as a as a uh, as a testing tool. Uh, but I'll just, I'll just sort of show you what I mean. So if you look at, say, the search box, um, see the X path here? It's a bit complicated, right? So it uses the text. But uh, what, what Appium will do, if you use an, this inspector, it will pick the ID as the first thing, because an ID is, is unique to that page. Um, so generally, if, a, if an app is well designed, like eBay, they'll have all this. Uh, I've worked for other customers and, and contracts where they haven't done any of this. And then you have to be very smart with your X path. So you can't take this as it is. You have to use a bit of logic to, to go around that and, and make sure it works well. Yeah. Uh, following on from that, thanks for letting me ask you a question. Uh, so so if, uh, there are some components and some frameworks that we have that don't create IDs for every, or they use shadow jobs, like I on it. Yeah. So um, I found particularly on web, using automation to pick up, say, ID components is quite hard. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I think the worst case scenario, we've been automating a few games at Headspin, like PUBG, and you can actually find, um, you can take screenshots and do image matching. So there's a lot of OCR stuff. Um, but it really depends on, on the quality of the app and how well it's been written for, for testing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no worries. Any, anyone else? Cool, cool. Awesome, thank you. All right, thanks everyone.